Experience the perfect blend of culinary delights, entertainment, and education on the number one food podcast in the country, Walk and Talk Podcast. Join host Carl Fiadini and the amazing chef Jeffrey Schlissel. Feed your appetite. Find this podcast on Apple and Spotify. Food fam, this is the Walk and Talk podcast where you'll find the perfect blend of food, fun, and cooking knowledge. I'm your host, Carl Fiadini. Welcome to the number one food podcast in the country. We're podcasting on site at Ibis Images Studios where food photography comes alive and uh, I get to eat it. First things first, last week we had New Orleans celebrity chef Sean Pooch Rivera in studio representing the Big Easy. And he cooked up an amazing crawfish and grits. Man, I got to tell you something. It was pretty pretty amazing. I said amazing, and I mean it. If you missed the episode, go and listen. Um, today, Jeff is cooking up some goodies after the show. Uh, more on that momentarily from the big man himself. Thank you, Peninsula Food Service, for supplying the proteins for today's production. Chefs in the central Florida area, Peninsula is the largest distributor of Creekstone Farms beef in the southeast United States. Complete with a fully staffed butcher shop to help you solve all of your kitchen inconsistencies. Check out the Dry Age program, too. Okay, our guest this week is one of the owners of Curveball Whiskey. It's barbecue whiskey. Yeah, I said barbecue whiskey. Also amazing. Lisa Leventhal. She's a badass female who made the best out of COVID. It's a great story. Stay tuned. Lisa is on deck uh, Jefferson, why don't you uh, pop the clutch, slam to that pre-shift, baby, and let's get going. Heck yeah, let's man. Let's get cooking, my man. It's wicked this week, man. It's wicked. Podcast. Wicked cool, yeah? <laughs> All right. So um, I kind of wanted to develop the menus over what national food days are, because every day there's a national food day. For instance, this is no April Fool's joke. April 1st is sourdough bread, bread day. So we're doing a sourdough uh, bread sandwich. It's going to be a little different. It's going to have some smoked chicken on there, or roasted grapes, whipped brie, rosemary, pistachios, and some bourbon bacon. Mm. Going to be some yumminess there. Roasted grapes, man. Yeah, that sounds actually. That's um, that rings a bell right there. I like it. it. I did it one time. I was uh, we were doing a dinner. We did a like a bruschetta, but we didn't use tomatoes. We used the roasted grapes instead. And it was fantastic. I never thought to who would have thunk to throw a grape in an a roasted or oven and roast it. But it's really good. I mean, I like saw I've sautéed grapes before mm-hmm. and use it as a stuff for um, uh, with a pork chop. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely good. And then, um, believe it or not, it's on the 8th of April is empanada day. So we're going to do a chicken pot pie one. I actually have three of those. There's a nice dipping sauce to go along with that one. Smoked chickens in there, celery root puree, roasted carrots. So there's different textures in there and caramelized onions. Uh, it was so good. Both my wife and my daughter had three hmm. yesterday. Wait a minute. Are you saying that that's, today, that's later today? Yeah. Oh, Hell yeah. All right. John actually talked. <laughs> well, he, 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 he whispered. I, know. I, I, I heard it, though. He's now whispering, John. And That's then it is. today, 4-4, four, four, it is actually two uh, food days today. There's the burrito, burrito. And then we got a chicken corton bleu. The burrito is going to have smoked shredded uh, chicken, Cuban-style pink beans, rice, collards, and then uh, that's going to be wrapped up in a flour tortilla. And then the chicken coton bleu is going to be stuffed with a bourbon ham, gruyere cheese. Mm. I have mataki mushrooms to go along with that, roasted carrots. Uh, and then a pomegranate demi reduction with some potato puree. So that's going to be really nice, too, as well. You're going to have a hard time today, I think. I don't think I'm going to have a hard time at all. I mean, deciding which one you like the best. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Not, not eating. We know <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're very handicapable of eating. Yeah, what are we talking about here? <laughs> You know. How was last week, by the way? All the food you took home to the fam. Everybody was happy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding? Turns out that my, you know, uh, the grits, grits, my mother-in-law favorite thing. I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who would have known? 
Godlo. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it, like, yeah, it works out great. Um, speaking of 420, what's happening on 420? Ah, uh, I love this, man. So the 420, we're doing a munchy menu over with a collaboration with the Porch Market over in Winter Park. Uh, Chef Steven, Chef Josh, Mike, uh, Jay, Frankie, and those guys over there. We're going to be over there throwing it down from, I think, was it 7.30, 7 o'clock to 9.30 or something like that. Uh, past the hors d'oeuvres. It's all themed. I'm going to reemphasize this. Themed around marijuana. There's no marijuana in it. If you come to the uh, event high, I can't do anything about it. But you will eat. But you will definitely eat. Uh, the menu is going to be popped out. And we don't advocate for any of this, by the way. It's just really cool food. Yeah, especially um, the one that's going to be wrapped in the egg roll, the spring roll, mm. shaped like a joint. Oh, my goodness. Got to throw it down, man. <sighs> you heard yeah, every... What did you say when you we mentioned, when I mentioned it was 420? What What happened? On that call. I, I just never seen such a bunch of giddy people in my <laughs> life. Like for me, you know, whatever, up or down, I don't care. What what you do is your business. You know, every long story short, you get a bunch of uh, restaurant uh, tours and chefs and stuff in one place. <laughs> you know, and the moniker of four twenty comes up, and again, it's like eleventh grade all over again. Um, pretty yes. amazing. Yeah, yeah, but it's going to be a fun event. I mean, we're going to have. Nightingale uh, ice cream cookies. They make them themselves. Mm-hmm. They make the ice cream, the cookies. They the menu, smash them. The, the menu looks deep. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's really a layered menu, and it's I'm super excited. Creekstone uh, beef tenderloin. I think there was foie gras on yeah. one of them. There's um, oh no, I'm getting confused with the competition on the 28th. Because <laughs> um, I was going to say there's pork from Happy Tales, but that's from the 28th. That's the different thing. That's a different event that I'm doing with Jason, Lynn, and Lance Cook. Right. Well, we're going to have chicken from Happy Tales. Uh, we have tuna on the menu, which I'm really psyched about. And then I think he's doing, ooh, a can-can. That's what Chef Steven's doing. That's mm-hmm. the oink, oink. Right. And then we're doing the tuna as a puff, puff, no pass. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to put, we'll put the menu up. Um on the socials and everybody get to see it and oh yeah it's like 128 per person six courses and liquor included right beer wine or liquor included yeah. mm-hmm. I, you know it's a great so uh it's winter park orlando which is a, a super cool area um you know the porch there you know that's uh three restaurants plus the uh uh the meadery and market um it's super, super awesome. These are great. This is a great gang of individuals. Um, and I'm excited, man, because, you know, we're starting to do this whole, you know, we talk uh, we talk cooking and food. This is what we are, what we do. And now we're actually, uh, we're doing it for the, for the peeps, for the masses. We're, we're doing these things. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and we'll still get back to the farms, but obviously we're not doing a farm event in June, July, right. August, yeah, September, yeah. October. No. No. no Unless they have air conditioning. <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry right not, not doing that oh my goodness um yeah, we, right, we so. can do a lot of barbecue though speaking of which well, which know, is a good segue I, well yeah it is a great segue and and um we actually gotta get we have to get back on a call with uh chef steven uh-huh because he did bring up a really great idea i'm not going to break it right now well maybe next week about barbecue and some stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was Tuesday you were talking because we yeah. were together and you mentioned that. Correct. Yeah, right. keep, keep it. I, sh- I don't know. Close your mouth. Tell me. Shut your, shut your mouth. Shut your All mouth. Right. I, you know what? Uh, don't we have a guest today? We do. She, <laughs> she's very patient. She's, <laughs> all right. Um, let's, uh, let's welcome Lisa to the program. How are you doing? I'm good. How are y'all doing? Man, you know, if if I was any better, I don't know what I would do with myself. It just, it's, <laughs> I love that for you. Yes, it's pretty amazing. It's what we do. I can't speak for the other two. John's just, you know, John's just staring at me, lost. No, I'm kidding. That's that's a, that's a lie. That's a lie. All right. Um, so, a little background. We met, um, you know, Jeffrey and Pooch, and, you know, John wasn't with us when we were in the... Uh, World Food Championship in Dallas last year. Um, but we mm-hmm. were very fortunate and very cool. It was very cool to meet you 
uh, at the event, and you basically kept us hydrated for about a week um, with your glorious, <laughs> glorious uh, barbecue whiskey. So thank you for that. I tried. You're welcome. My pleasure. Yeah. I, uh, that was one of the things about that whole thing. It was like everyone was like, there's no water. I'm like, but there's bourbon. But there's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely. so. But there's alcohol. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, we had to hook up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like I, I'm indebted to you for that because um, <laughs> it made the whole experience, it amplified the whole experience, enhanced it. Uh, well, and it was good it was drinks, fun. too. Who doesn't love a happy hour, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. So let's 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 do this. Um, by the way, we're going to be shooting, um, you know, we you, you were nice enough to send, uh, you know, some some fun stuff and uh, some bottles our way. And we're going to be shooting that later. John will be. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we're not drinking right now because someone won't let us take a, sh- a drink because the bottle can't be opened. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not Dang, mad. I'm, I'm not sorry. Mad. It's not your fault. It's you know. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, <laughs> or the buzzkill. <laughs> oh, literally, like the absolute <laughs> literal statement. Yes, buzzkill for sure. <laughs> Dad's here. We can't drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, granted it's a little early, but whatever, that's never stopped anybody Five before. o'clock somewhere, somewhere indeed. Um, yeah. when, so you first, uh, how did you first become interested in whiskey and what, what led the start of the company? Walk and talk podcast now sweetened by noble citrus. Bite into a juicy crunch tangerine, 40 years perfected, seedless and oh so tasty. Or savor a starburst pomelo, the giant citrus with a unique zing. Don't miss autumn honey tangerines, big and easy to peel. Noble, generations of citrus expertise, delivering exceptional flavor year-round. Taste the difference with Noble Citrus. I've been in the hospitality industry my entire career, uh, working in restaurants and bars. I worked for Walt Disney, being someone that grew up in Florida for a while, as well as Darden and Outback, um, before moving to the West Coast and working for a hospitality group out there. Um, That's probably where I became a lot more involved in the beverage side of the hospitality business. I was the beverage director for a group that owned restaurants, bars, nightclubs, hotels, retail, you name it, we had it. Um, So I had a really uh, fun job of going to Kentucky and buying barrels and barrels of bourbon and going to Mexico and buying barrels and barrels of tequila and being flown all over the world to do a bunch of fun stuff. Um, And definitely brown spirits were always my favorite. I gravitated towards whiskey and bourbon. Um, Bourbon's the original American spirit, right? So there's a lot of pride that's taken in the way that it's made and aged. And the entire process is just very exciting and interesting to me. Um, So I moved from San Francisco to Chicago and started working for the Alinea Group. And then, you know, through COVID, when everything really just shut down, and especially in Illinois and Chicago, nothing was open, Um, unlike Florida and some other fun states. Um, We, a group of our of my friends who all come from the industry, all have different backgrounds in the industry. We found ourselves barbecuing a ton outside because you could really only spend time outside together and drinking, going through a lot of the whiskey and bourbon that we had all stashed up. Um, A couple nights, maybe some barbecue sauce made it into some whiskey. And the next morning we were kind of like, was that a good thing or was that a bad thing? What happened? Um, So we really started toying around with the idea of bringing a fun and exciting new product to market that had never really been 
thought of uh, from nuts to bolts, from the marketing, the branding, the demographic we were going after, um, trying to make a product for the masses that, again, was just really fun and um, exciting and new. I like to call it the flavored whiskey that nobody saw coming and that nobody asked for. But here we are. <laughs> um so that's kind of, you know, how we got into the swing of things. It, you know, we were all industry vets, so we kind of had a pretty good jumping off point when we were figuring out the recipe and exactly the flavor profile that we were looking for. Um, so we launched our product in the fall of 2021 in a non-barbecue centric state to see if we were crazy, like if we either created the world's biggest flop or something that actually had legs. Um, so opened in Wisconsin in October of 2021. And then by the end of 2021, we had sold through everything we had made. Yeah, but and so, so. and which is a wonderful problem to have. But you guys, there's like mm -hmm. what, 12, there's like 12 owners in this thing, right? Yeah, there's 12 of us. Um, each of us has really different backgrounds, but we kind of all stay in our lane <laughs> and have one goal in mind. So it works for us. Yeah, I mean, you guys are deeper than Wu-Tang over there. Huh? <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's <laughs> you know, when I, when you told me that we, uh, we had a phone call yesterday, Jeff, and, um, you know, it was an impromptu sort of thing. And uh, I, I got to hear some of the story uh, ahead of time, but um yeah, uh, that that's pretty amazing. So, uh, so <clears throat> as you're as you're going through this process, and it's so it's the it's the liquor industry, it's whiskey. Um, you're a female entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Did you were there any special challenges there with that? Like uh, you you've done a lot of traveling, you've done a lot with this. Um, any 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 hiccups there? W what was that like? Um, it's always interesting, right? I wouldn't necessarily say that it's been challenging. Um, a lot of doors have been open to us, very fortunately, because of relationships we all have in the industry. Um, I will say it, I still usually end up being the only woman in the room. So I hope that that continues to change and evolve over the years. Um, but you know, bourbon and whiskey have always been dominated by uh, men until, you know, pretty recently with the emergence of products like Uncle Nearest and um, stuff like that. So um, it's nice because it seems that people are ready for some new perspectives and some new ideas. So I do feel like I've been very welcomed in where I have been invited. Yeah, it's almost so it's almost as thing. if yeah, I I agree because it's almost a, well when we were growing up, um, if it it seems like females were relegated to like amaretto sours, you know what I mean, and um, Tom Collins, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 or yeah, and we were you know, and the and the fellas were with the with the the brown uh, liquors and whatnot, old fashions in Manhattan, Manhattan exactly, yeah. Um, and, and you know, yeah. I've, I've noticed myself, you know, just we're all in the business here as well and surrounded by, um, you know, restaurant folks and restaurateurs and whatnot. And I've noticed that, um, yeah, man, there's a, there's a, a huge shift, um, on the palate for, uh, for the, on the female side for the, for the whiskeys and bourbons. I mean, I think that's amazing. I think it's great because, you know, it's, it's a different experience. It's a sipping experience. It's not like, um, you know, tequila or vodka where you're, you're banging these things and all of us, you know, just for the, this is a whole different experience <clears throat> in my perspective. For my sure. Perspective. Yeah. I like to refer to us as a gateway whiskey or <laughs> bourbon. Um, you know, it really, a lot of women are intimidated by brown spirits, right? Like men collect them like they're Pokemon in real life. It's a real life hunt sometimes. And that is intimidating. I just recently moved to Texas and Unlike other states I've lived in, the allocations for products were a lot easier. So, you know, I showed up to like a Specs at eight in the morning when they don't open till 10 to grab a bottle of Blanton's that in any other state, I wouldn't have had any problem just going in and purchasing. And yeah, these guys were like all in a discord talking about me being in line because I was the only woman there. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. So speaking of, uh, speaking of different, um, you know, whiskeys and liquors and whatnot, <clears throat> what sets curveball apart from some of the others that are out there? Like what, obviously it's a barbecue based profile. Um, tell us mm-hmm. more about that because it's, it's, it's easy. I will say this before you jump in. It's so easy to drink and smooth and it just, <laughs> it weighs so nice on the palate. Yeah. It's pretty dangerously easy to enjoy. Um, the viscosity is really nice and there's no burn at all. Flavor profiles from the smoke and different savory ingredients and components, even, you know, I made sure that there was even a salinity that you can taste in the flavor profile that kind of keeps you wanting to sip more. Um, you know, being in the industry for so long, you know, I grew up on like Jaeger, right? So for me, that's kind of the original shop brand. Yeah. Then moving into like the early 2010s where Fireball was just rebranded into what it currently is and became such a hit. Um, Part of the evolution for flavored whiskey was moving from Fireball to like Screwball. Screwball did a really great job at stealing market share in the shot market and in the flavored whiskey market by being able to convert into into cocktails. So not only were they a shot brand first and foremost, but the other applications are really what started to get them a lot of depletions and pull through in the market. Um, Curveball was made in kind of with a three-prong approach, right? We're always going to be true to a shop brand. We convert really easily to cocktails, as you guys have tasted. Mostly, they're classic cocktails with a smoky twist. Um, And then Curveball was also created with the culinary aspect in mind. You know, people don't really cook with Jaeger Fireball or Screwball, but We've got pitmasters all over the United States using the product. We've got restaurants using the product in food items from baked beans to sauces to marinades to glazes to even um, uh, dessert, like creating uh, caramel out of the barbecue-flavored whiskey to get those notes of smoke into a dessert. Um, So I just want to let you know he's looking at me right now, Lisa. He's looking at me when you just said that. (laughs) Yeah. You have a new assignment? Yeah, yeah he, he's mm-hmm. obviously the, the wheels are turning on the bus right now. Well, I'm, I'm more in the tr- You're like the, Lisa, you're like the Pied Piper uh, over here, and I'm just, I'm just going to follow you off the, the pier. <laughs> you know? Oh, wow. Perfect. Um, yeah. Yes. Talk about the proof. Like, is that normal uh, for bourbon? Is that why it's more ex- it's easier? Not. It's not. Um, bourbon's usually 80 proof unless you've got something that's obviously overproof. Um, so we didn't want to, we wanted to make sure that it could be consumed at room temperature, which is I prefer the drink whiskey and bourbon meat. Um, we didn't want it to have any burn. Like I said, it is kind of a gateway uh, whiskey or bourbon. Um, and we wanted it to be more approachable. Um, if you've tasted some other flavored whiskeys like Howler Head, it's like a banana flavored whiskey. That one is 80 proof and it's just hot. I can't, I have a hard time figuring out like what to do with it, how to consume it. Um, and I feel like if I'm looking at it with a question mark, what's the general consumer looking at it like? Um, so we are right in between Fireball and Screwball as far as proof goes, or right in between. Uh, we thought that we've tasted a bunch of iterations, um, if not hundreds of iterations of the product at different proof levels. And this was kind of the sweet spot that was the most approachable. What was the inspiration for the name Curveball? Attention chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. 
Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. So the liquor industry is pretty cutthroat and part of creating this new product was, like I said, bringing fun back into the industry. We really wanted to throw the industry a curveball. Um, like I said, it's the flavored whiskey that no one saw coming and nobody asked for, <laughs> but for me, it's the little engine that could, right? Um and then we wanted to pay homage, obviously, to the barbecue community and let them know that we take what they do very seriously, which is how we got to kind of the Weber kettle-esque uh, skull that looks a little intimidating, but with a spatula and fork um, to really hammer home kind of what to expect from what's in the bottle. Uh, that sweet and smoky flavor. I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like you really hit a niche with that because the barbecue community is super, <clears throat> super tight knit um, relationships. The wise barbecue and- community is like the opposite of the liquor industry. Correct. I have never met so many people who have welcomed me into their homes, who have welcomed me into their RVs, into their camps. They will literally show you how to do everything. Whereas I thought that that would be such like a, they'd be like complete gatekeepers and like try to shut everyone out. They're just so talented at what they do with like, it's like muscle memory that they'll literally show you exactly what they do and just know that you won't be able to recreate what it is they do. Like that's how bold the barbecue community is. They got no secrets. Um, And it has been pure magic and joy to meet these people. And I feel so honored to work with as many of them as we do. Yeah, I think that's pretty amazing. And and for the record, that's how I feel about this whole podcasting thing. You know, people, I have conversations every week and, you know, I get a lot of questions like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? I'll share it all with you (laughs) because chances are (laughs) it's going to fizzle anyway. Uh, It's a lot of work. Oh, my goodness. Um, Yeah. So I can appreciate that 100%. All right. You, you told me, um, you'd been to every state now doing tastings, right? Yeah. Um, we started opening up all 50 states kind of in the middle of 2022. And then we didn't get finished opening all those states until May of 2023. So, I have just been running and gunning, even though there are 12 of us, there's really only four of us that travel and I'm the only one that doesn't have kids. So I travel like a lot the most. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Every, every weekend, every, yeah. But every that, waking moment, pretty much. <laughs> but that was, that was, uh, that was because you, you guys picked up some serious distribution, correct? We did. Um, We were super fortunate to attract the attention of Southern Glaciers at the beginning of 2022. And then we signed a contract with them at the end of June in 2022 to go nationwide with them in all 44 markets that they're located. And then we opened the other six markets um, with other distributors where Southern didn't have availability or didn't have presence. so yeah, this is our first full year that we are in all 50 states and I have relocated myself to Texas to um, tackle this giant state head on. <laughs> well, congratulations for the, uh, for the win on distribution. That's, that's really an amazing accomplishment. So hats off there. Um, Thank you. Yes, of course. Uh, so traveling t- so uh, we've all done our fair share here in this uh, on this particular podcast of uh, traveling, um, mm-hmm. but you're doing it for tastings. You're doing it for all sorts of stuff. I mean, what sort of, do you have any really cool stories? You, you must have a story or two. Oh. I mean, I do have quite a few stories. I mean, we 
definitely take a grassroots approach to everything. You know, we're not Gallo or Diageo or Bacardi. Uh, we don't have crazy, like unlimited budgets and stuff like that. So a lot of the events and everything that we've done have really been kind of like under the radar, getting help from pitmasters and friends by like legitimately smuggling in our wares. And then me just smiling and nodding at people and pretending like I'm supposed to be there and sticking as much whiskey in people's mouths as I can pretty much. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, but all right, you've done that. I mean, if it were me, I probably wouldn't be able to tell any of these stories. Um, I mean, these are, um, I mean, I probably shouldn't admit to any of these stories. <laughs> well, let's just say, well, let's just say that it's not you and it's hypothetical. What do you got? Yeah. Hypothetically speaking, um, our first endeavor into kind of an event was actually Memphis in May, uh, in 2022, it was my first really big interaction with all of these barbecue all-stars and meeting all of these people that I idolize. It's funny. I never get starstruck when I meet like athletes or celebrities, but chefs are just like, I just put them on a pedestal. Like they just do something that people can't like, um, I don't know. I just think they're the greatest. And these pit masters have been so much fun to work with. They're a little more laid back than normal chefs. Um, a lot more and... laid back. I will say that they're, they're a lot more laid back. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can be, they have their moments. Everyone's got their <laughs> moments. Um, so yeah, really just being able to sneak into places like we had um, we were with Heath Riles the year that he won ribs at Memphis in May. Um, and we were just pulling carts and carts and carts of whiskey and handing out little minis and trying to keep our head down every time the cops passed us or just smile and nod and um, pretend like we were supposed to be there. You know, it's just like, yeah, we're allowed to do this. It sounds great for us. It's almost like um, you were you were pushing like uh you know CDs out of the back of your car. You just you know or that's a hundred percent like cookies. you know yeah like <clears throat> opening up my jacket with the Rolexes inside. Like it was it was definitely like that, and I really didn't have a plan at all for if we were going to get caught, other than maybe crying. But um, <laughs> that was all I really had at my sleeves. Lady tears do do get you in a lot of trouble sometimes. Um, I can tell you that but, that man tears, they, all you get is ridicule and jokes. So you know, <laughs> you just keep yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, on the road, we've been able to meet crazy um, pit masters and different uh, restaurant groups. Like that's how we met famous Dave's um, and Dave Anderson and have a really wonderful partnership with them. I was fortunate enough to be able to get back to some of my Disney roots and work with them on some different uh, programs and festivals. And uh, it's been really nice to reach out to old friends and make new friends and introduce this crazy new product to people one day at a time. Right. Um, yeah. Hello. Uh, hashtag, uh, you know, walk and talk media. Sure. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, what are we talking about here? What are we doing? You know, so you mentioned that you worked and you were starstruck by chefs, but you actually worked for one of the best chefs in the United States, hands down. How was that time period? Um, chef Grant Ackett, because I assume who yes. you're referring to. Yes. You mentioned, um, you mentioned the restaurant group. Is, I did. He's a wonderful human being, and it was always such an honor to just be in the same space as him. Um, you know, his mind is a beautiful mind. And I've been fortunate enough to dine with the company a few times. And every time I just, I can't imagine how they would outdo what they've done in the past. And it still takes my breath away. It's um, one of the most entertaining dining experiences and theatrical dining experiences anyone could ever have. Whereas, you know, 
like the French Laundry is just so classic and beautiful. And of course, there's nothing wrong with an experience like that. But Alinea is just over the top, like a once in a lifetime experience. And he is just, he's a kind person who is always willing to talk to you and listen to you. Um, and I think that's because of how he had been treated early in his career and where he really was able to flourish and grow under like Thomas Keller's tutelage. So um, he is a great person there. It's a great company. I, I missed working for those guys. It was a good time. Do you have your product there? Because I would, I, I don't, would, but I mean, <laughs> I would wonder what he would, would do with it. I would be horrified to even <laughs> ask. <laughs> but I would wonder what Have he would do with it for. They're like, why? I mean, it, yeah, it's very possible he could do something incredible with it. I mean, he made food fly. Like, let's not lie. He'll figure something out. But um, you know yeah, that, right? No, he, that is definitely. Okay. You know, okay, when you said that I've tried when when you said he makes literally makes food fly, I looked over at Carl. I'm like, you you know, he does that. And he's like, yeah, okay, yeah, he does that. Yeah. He does that. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that the idea came about when you guys were barbecuing and some of the sauce and some of the spices. So and some of the pitmasters are using this. Um, what yeah. are some of the mm -hmm. like the flavor profiles that really stand out that people have used your product with that you were like, oh my god, this is amazing. Um, so I like to accent our product with different flavors because I'm also the, you know, my, my colleagues would call me the mixologist. I feel like I'm more of a drank slanger than a mixologist. Um, so I love playing with flavor profiles. Um, for me, it was important to have kind of a very mainstream barbecue flavor, very similar to uh, a household item that everyone knows, which is like the barbecue Lay's potato chip. Is kind of where I felt like that really has nostalgia for people. Everyone knows what that flavor is the second they put, they open the bag, right? Um, they know what to expect and what to taste. I like enhancing the product with outside flavors like star anise, um, adding cinnamon, adding vanilla, adding fresh vanilla to the whiskey when making like a sauce or a glaze is a game changer. Um, cloves, uh, when you're making cocktails, the use of fresh lemon juice just pulls all of those really fun um, savory flavor profiles and components out of the whiskey in such a beautiful way and helps enhance the smoke. Um, so yeah, for, for me, I like adding things to it and kind of manipulating the flavor profile a little bit to pull on different, um, ingredients that I know are in the product. You know, it's, it's kind of like the Coke recipe, right? We each have like six ingredients and knowing has all of them together in one place at one time. <laughs> yeah. One of the things you do taste when you taste this right away, like for me, it's almost like my, the rub I use in, in the process of barbecuing mixed with bourbon. So, and it's funny enough mm -hmm. that I actually use bourbon as the moisture content to cook the meat. So I don't use like water baths or anything like that. I'm I enhance the flavor of brine. For instance, my bacon is brined with um, bourbon. And I just realized I love that. that. Yeah, I, I mean, need to use your. That's bourbon. where I started. <laughs> that's where I started too. I've I've always cooked with alcohol just because I love I love booze. I don't know how else to say that. Well, it, it adds complexity. A lot of times, people ask me, "Well, why do you have to cook everything, especially my desserts? I have to and mm -hmm. put infuse some sort of liquor into it." To me, it's it's layers. It's right. layering flavors. complexity. It's complexity. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's like, For why, sure. if you're going to have some, an orange dessert, then use Grand Marnier or Triple Sec. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do something mm -hmm. that's a little bit uh, naughty, then you use Curveball, you know, because it's got those spices. <laughs> it's got those. No, I'm, t I'm being serious. It's because it's got the smoke. It's got everything yeah. you need that you want to do in it. For instance, if you're doing a uh, uh, campfire s'mores. Perfect. Oh, man. Perfect. A hundred, yeah, 100%. 
Uh-huh. Or so, like you mentioned, Carmel. I make, I make a campfire. I make a campfire coffee in the morning with curveball because I can drink whiskey. <laughs> it doesn't matter what time of day, day or night. I mean, if I had Bloody Mary mix right now, I would have a drink in front of me. I'm just in a hotel room, and I didn't plan properly. Shame oh, for really? shame. So when you said I, know, I have I coffee with this in, in it, we both looked at John because John makes us <laughs> Cuban coffees, and we're like, we look yeah. right over at him. We're like, okay, we're we're doing this after the call. <laughs> <laughs> So think, good in coffee. I think we're going to have to change some of the routines here. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. What are we cooking with this, man? What are we doing? With uh, this? We're going to cook some stuff with it, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you hear that, Lisa? Because he doesn't have his mic on. He just said, well, you're not opening my bottle. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'll send you more bottles. You know, I'm, my mom's got a whole stash in Hollywood right now. If you guys were closer. Oh, yeah. Try, so she's from, she's from Hollywood. You're, oh, you're from Hollywood. She's from, yeah, she's from Hollywood. What, what part of Hollywood does your mom live in? The Hills, Emeralds, um, Hollywood Hills, Emerald she, Hills? Hollywood Hills. She lives at uh, like 46th and Fillmore Street. She's a neighbor to my mother. <laughs> literally, yeah. yeah, literally a neighbor to my mom. She's over on 56th and Grant. <laughs> Over Got there, it. Yeah. In the, the President Street. Yep. Yep. I know them well. That's how, you know, that's what's funny. That's how growing up I knew my presidents. <laughs> Joe's sure. doing same, the same thing. Same, that's, absolutely. 100%. If, if it wasn't for Hollywood, I would not do Which came first? Well, there's Grant, there's Hayes, there's Garfield, <laughs> Arthur. I can still do it. <laughs> Cleveland. <laughs> See? Roosevelt. Exactly. You've got it. Taft. 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. On the other side is Hair Harding. <laughs> It's so funny. Uh, yeah. Small wow. world. Yeah, very small world. Yeah. I thought mm-hmm. because I, I, I was on I lived on Washington and fifty six for a while. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's that's wow. an uh, that area right now is an old fogey home now. Yeah. Really sure. went that way. <laughs> well you had a Hollywood Medical Center that was right down the street, which is now, now Memorial probably. Yeah, probably Memorial. Memorial's all over the place yeah, now. It took over. Yeah. Everybody was like, You were born in Hollywood, but you weren't born in uh Memorial Hospital? Why not? I'm like, I was, I don't know. I was born wherever my mom was. Well, I didn't have a choice. (laughs) You were, you were in, uh, where I was, I was living, my mom and dad lived in Hollywood. I was born in North Miami General Hospital for some reason. I have no idea why, because we were in Hollywood. My sister was born in Mount Sinai. Yeah. But everybody, everybody was having their kids, uh, in North Miami. uh, So why not, uh, Memorial at that point? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I was born in North Miami too. I don't think Memorial had a children's like probably hospital, like a, like a, well, back when, back when I was born, when I was little, (laughs) 53 years ago. Stop it. You're going to, we're losing audience every time you do that. No, actually we're gaining, (laughs) we're getting the, uh, the age is gaining. We're losing the younger, (laughs) gaining the older. (laughs) (laughs) And then we have Lisa come on with screw a curveball. Then we, we just throw in a whole wrench in the whole process. That's uh, you know right. What? We're mm-hmm. bringing them back. We're bringing yeah, them back. with that they will. We are. We are. So this what's, is made for the children. What? And over my children, 21. I mean, twenty one and older. <laughs> right. Yeah. We know. What you, thank you. Because John just put his hands in his face. <laughs> John's like, dang, yeah, I gotta, no, I gotta edit now. Sorry, John. Don't have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> we listen. We have a we have a thing here where uh, we we aim. Not to do any editing, okay? So, mm, that's and that's a good goal. It really is, and um, and we do really well with it, except for me, except for right, Jeff, Jeff, a few <laughs> times. You know, it's, it's always something from within. You know, it's like the call's coming from inside the house. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. But um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we almost John he, he he perked up a little bit, and and and, uh, and then you saved it, so we're good, Lisa. It's okay. No Fantastic. editing so far. I will say that this is the most drinkable bourbon out there. So if you're wondering, I don't like bourbon, I'm not going to go for it because it's a brown liquor and it's harsh, it's burned, just like Lisa was saying. This hands down, I couldn't believe it because also this saved me when we were in Dallas because there was no, literally there was no water anywhere in the, in the place. <laughs> no, she kept us. I said it I, again. I, I know. Yeah, kept well, you were hydrated. walking around. Let's be honest. You were walking around. So you hydrated. know the story about Curveball because I found out about it because you were walking around judging. Yeah. So Lisa and I had several conversations <laughs> because I was <laughs> trying to rehydrate and people were going like, you were trying to drink. I'm like, no, I was literally trying to drink water or anything. This was a life yeah. and death mm-hmm. scenario. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I was also trying yeah. to wash down the seven pounds of the soft shell crawfish. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. When, I don't know when we're getting together again, Lisa, but um, we need to get something on the calendar. I know. I know. I'll have to let you know the next time I'm in Orlando and we should go drinking around the world to Epcot and drink curveball. Uh, sure. Okay. Maybe we'll have Stefan come out, uh, the pastry chef over there. I'd love to get him on this thing too, this program. He's a great guy. Do you know Stefan over at Disney? He's like the head person. Where, of, what property? He's the head person of all of uh, the pastry shops. He's the the guru of. I uh, don't. He's he's just a gem of a person. So if we do, I want to hook him up so you can taste this because him and the chocolate with this. And his mindset would be just amazing. Truly. Be so good. See, see when, yeah. these things, when these th- things come up on these podcasts, I just want to click the button off and go and, and go. <laughs> no. Like I always sh- shut it down and let's get the hell out of here. Let's go now. So what, what, I mean? we, what we have to do is we get Ryan Manning and Lisa when she's in town and we all go over because that's a definite thing where Stefan would meet us. Give him the bottle of curveball. Let him go work his magic with the chocolate and let us be there for the tasting. Right, Oops, but I want fun. him to put me. I want him to yeah, put me. Set that up. Let me let me sit in the Stat. apron. Yeah, I want to be there. Oh yeah, you want to be in the apron? Like yeah, you were me, doing something. Yeah, well, just you know, <laughs> poke my head out a little bit. Like, let me just see what's going on. You know? Yeah, I would love that to go have drinking around the world. I love doing that. Um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Again, here I am. Feature like, curveball during food and wine festival. So, can, can you be awesome. there in two hours, Lisa? Is that all I'm saying? But she's in Dallas. It's a little bit <laughs> it's more. The than fall, that. you guys. It. it we should wait till the fall. You know Florida. Let's let's wait till it's not true story. You know, true story. The <sighs> surface of the sun. I live in just circular disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no problem. We'll wait till the fall. Okay. Okay. <sighs> All right. Are you going to be in Indy for the World Food Championship? I am going to be in Indy for the World Food Championship. We have partnered with Famous Dave's again to sponsor the Barbecue All-Star Series, which is how you win a golden ticket to the World Food Championship for barbecue. Mm, Nice. Yummy. So what I was just thinking about, just so you guys know, when Pooch was here last week, he he kind of uh, handed me off a uh, little tray of those soft shell crawfish. I'm thinking we do like a like what he was doing the, the piggy with the tur the surf mm-hmm. or the turf yeah surf so I was thinking maybe more the lines of a surf and turf curveball the crawfish maybe some meat barbecue something that like that that range okay okay I can dig Ooh. it what, what's the how, what's the application are you gonna do it what are you gonna do I'm gonna do a salted caramel demi oh. with curveball. Mm-hmm. She's good. I like I like reducing her down. It's probably my favorite food application for curveball. I'm, I'm I'm salivating right now. It's almost like a Pavlov dog <laughs> scenario. The ring the bell, I just start drooling. It's that's what's happening. I'm, I almost went Pavlova, which is a cake. <laughs> that actually that would be too, really good too. Oh, that would, yeah. yeah, that would actually really be good. Pavlova with that. Oh my goodness! It probably would. You're not wrong. I'm just, so I, you know, I did go to the doctor a few weeks ago and everything came back pretty okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, so we could do this. Let's make it happen. We're, yeah. we're still amazed at that. Are I'm you shocked. sure it was your, your samples that were yeah, tested? I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I really am. And, but it's like having another, you know, second life of this thing. <laughs> we're gonna, a lease on, another lease on life. Huh? Yeah. I, listen, I, who knew you, you don't understand the debauchery that goes on with these, uh, you know, over here on production day. No, you you missed I it. I have an idea. No, you missed it because we we were. He came in. He's like, I was with the doctors last week. I'm like, well, did you have grease come out of your blood, or was it blood? Was it like cleaning a fryer? Like what happened for you? <laughs> there was a yeah. He's like, uh, let me let me get the grease trap. I'm like, all right, there you go. You know, all right, Lisa. What's the um, what's your socials? How do people find you? Um. They find us at www.curveballwhiskey.com. That's probably the easiest way to find where you can buy the product. We're in total wine nationally. 
and then at curveballwhiskey.com for Instagram and my Instagram handle at barbecue whiskey woman. Oh, man, all right. Um, thanks for being on the uh, on the program today. You're amazing. Your gang of uh, co-owners are amazing. Your product is amazing. And I feel like we're going to do some more stuff with it, and uh, hopefully with you guys, too. Um, Crack a bottle open without John noticing it. Yeah, I think we're going to do it. <laughs> no, he's shaking his head no. <laughs> that would be awesome. He's yeah. like, no, don't touch my whiskey. Yeah, yeah. that's what he just did. All right, stay uh, stay on the uh-huh. line. We're gonna we're gonna catch you uh, off air in a second. Um, in Jeff the green room. in the green room. Jeff, John, as always, uh, great production. Um, chefs, Peninsula Food Service, Central Florida, for the meats. We are out. Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing, deliver healthy taste options to clientele, and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com.